Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, November 15th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's Microsoft Patch Tuesday, so let's dive right in. We got patches for 64 different vulnerabilities in Microsoft products. There were 14 vulnerabilities affecting Chromium and with that uh, Microsoft Edge. There were also five vulnerabilities mentioned in the uh, Patch Tuesday release that are really Linux vulnerabilities and they affect the Microsoft Linux distribution Mariner that is used in Asia. So I didn't really cover them as part of uh, the our Patch Tuesday overview because there aren't really anything special sort of Microsoft related. Only three of the vulnerabilities are considered critical. Now we had five different vulnerabilities that were either already known prior to Patch Tuesday or that are already being exploited. None of those five actually falls in the critical category. Let's start with the first one of the already disclosed vulnerabilities. That's CVE 2023 36038. This is a denial of service vulnerability in ASP.NET Core. CVSS score of 8.2. The second one is more interesting. Uh, that's a Microsoft Office security feature bypass CVE 2023-36413. When you download a document, when you receive a document email and open it, it's supposed to open in the uh, restricted, uh, the protected uh, mode. Well, uh, due to this vulnerability, that can be bypassed and uh, the document becomes fully editable, which also also means some active content like macros and such may be enabled. Then we have a privilege escalation vulnerability, actually a couple of them, CVE 2023-36036. That one is already being exploited. It's in the Microsoft Windows Cloud Files mini filter driver. And the second privilege escalation vulnerability that is being exploited and has been disclosed prior to the patch release is a flaw in the Windows DWM core library. A second security feature vulnerability or security feature bypass vulnerability and that's CVE 2023-36025 in Windows Smart Screen already being uh, exploited and uh, not yet made public. And finally, there is sort of one critical vulnerability that I want to point out, and that's CVE 2023-36397. This is yet another vulnerability. We had a couple of them in the last few months, I believe, in the Windows Pragmatic General Multicast Protocol. Don't think it's enabled by default, and in order to exploit a vulnerability, an attacker would have to have direct access to the network, so not necessarily remotely exploit but uh, something to really keep an eye on and something that you should probably patch. Yes, and we also got a couple of exchange vulnerabilities. Again, of course, they're always fun to patch. And uh, four of these vulnerabilities, all with a CSS score of 8.0, so short of being critical. One of them, uh, remote code execution vulnerability. So I would rate this Microsoft Patch Tuesday as maybe a little bit uh, below average as far as the type and severity of the vulnerabilities. Not so much below average is Adobe's Patch Tuesday. We got patches for 14 different products. I'll just focus on sort of some of the hacker favorites. Cold Fusion, for example, has a fix for six different vulnerabilities. Three of them are critical. Two of the critical ones are arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities with CSS scores in the 9.1 and 9.8 range. Now, Adobe also lists a priority for their patches. And for these patches, they have a priority rating of three. I wanna call them out here a little bit on that. That's probably not correct here. According to Adobe, a priority three means that the update resolves vulnerabilities in a product that has historically not been targeted for attackers. Well, uh, I have to tell you, Adobe, but uh, Cold Fusion is actually a pretty big uh, target out there. 
We also uh, do have uh, patches for Acrobat and Reader, another sort of favorite uh, attack target for attackers. Adobe doesn't think so. Priority rating of uh, three here. No uh, nine point vulnerabilities here. Uh, there are a couple that Adobe does consider critical that do allow arbitrary code execution. Most of the other products are your standard uh, client products, so I don't consider them really as exposed as some of uh, these uh, servers and, uh, well, Adobe Acrobat and Reader that are sort of favorite topics. Uh, RoboHelp server also affected, but uh, nothing sort of in the 9.x range here as far as CVSS score goes. And finally, we got a little bit of time for one more vulnerability that I think we need to cover, and that's a patch that Intel released for the microcode for some of its uh, processors. The problem here is that a certain set of instructions can trigger a glitch state as uh, Tavis Ormandy, who found this vulnerability, uh, calls it. What this means is that basically uh, the processor crashes, causing a crash of the system. But denial of service is not the only possibility here. It's uh, also a possible uh, to uh, leak information from areas that the user executing the code is not supposed to have access to. This is, in my opinion, a little bit uh, more dangerous than some of these sort of site channel attacks because it appears to be fairly straightforward and uh, repeatable uh, to execute. Of course, particular dangerous for anything cloud-related where you have uh, multiple users share the same CPU. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for mentioning this uh, podcast to friends, to sand salespeople you happen to talk to, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.